Hello everyone, this is Mr. Caviani, and in this video we're going to explore the conservation of energy and how we can use this concept to solve problems. Before we begin, I'd like to bring up a useful analogy that will help you understand the idea of conservation of energy. Um, energy and money, if you think about it, aren't all that different. Just like money, energy comes in many different forms. So we have kinetic energy, we have potential energy, but even within those two categories, we have specific types of kinetic energy. We have specific types of potential energy. We've got gravitational potential energy and chemical energy and nuclear energy. So energy exists in many different forms. And energy can be converted or transformed from one form into another. And you've seen that when you've turned on a light bulb or maybe you've sat down next to a warm fire, right? You've seen a transformation of energy happen. Well, if you've ever traveled or if you've ever lived in another country that used another form of currency, then you've experienced a type of transformation yourself, right? Um, in the United States, we use dollars, but other countries use things like pesos and yen and drachma and, um, you know, all different forms of currency. And so um, money, just like energy, can be turned into other forms of money, right? Other currencies, if you will. Um, but the idea is that even if I take $100 of American money and turn that into pounds, right? Um, it's the same amount of money, just in a different currency. Again, not considering a conversion fee. <laughs> um, so the idea is that energy can be converted between different forms, just like money can be converted into different currencies. But at the end of the day, we still have the same amount of money or energy that we had in the first place. Um, and so this is the idea that no matter what's happening, energy is always conserved. Energy may look different, it may go to a different place, but it always goes somewhere and it always comes from somewhere else. And so we call this the idea of the uh, law of conservation of energy. And that is to say that the total energy in the universe does not change, right? Um, energy cannot be created or destroyed from nothing. Now, energy can enter or leave a system, and we'll look at that in a moment, um, but the idea is that that energy is not disappearing, and it's not being created from thin air. All right, take a moment, pause the video, and jot down some thoughts about that in the box on your screen um, to make sure that you've uh, put this analogy into your own words. All right, now I'd like to continue this analogy by bringing work into the situation. So if energy is kind of like money, then work is kind of like either getting paid on the left here or going shopping. And let's take a look at what I mean by that. So when you get paid, right, the total amount of money that you have increases, right? So um, like in our previous example, when you convert money from one form to another, you don't get money and you don't lose money essentially, right? You just have the same amount of money. But when you get paid, money comes from some other outside source, right? Some external source. Maybe it's your employer. Maybe it's um, a store that you own. Uh, so you're getting money from somewhere else and your total amount of money is increasing, well, this is like doing positive work on a system, right? When we do positive work on a system, we are transferring energy into that system, okay? So getting paid is kind of like doing positive work. You're increasing the total amount of energy that you have. All right, now if getting paid is like positive work, then going shopping would be an example of negative work. And so what happens when you go shopping, right? You see some cool things that you like, maybe you buy some gifts for your friends and family, and then all of a sudden you realize that you've spent quite a bit of money. And so the total amount of money that you own in all of your accounts has gone down, right? It's gone somewhere else. So this would be an example of negative work, right? Negative work takes energy away from the system. Negative work transfers energy out of the system. And so getting paid is positive work. Money's coming in, energy's coming in. Going shopping is like negative work. Energy or money is leaving the system. All right, so I'd like you to think of this analogy in a moment when we start to combine work and energy together.